Footage has been circulating across social media of black people, Africans, black people in Ukraine being denied to leave the Ukrainian border, as well as being dragged off trains. Right now we're part three. This is your dummy's guide to what's going on in Ukraine. My name is Kenem O and I'm reporting to you from Washington, DC. We don't have arms. We don't have arms. We don't have arms. We are students. We are students. We are not allowing any black people to enter inside the gates. We are all here. It's only Ukrainians that they are allowing in. Now, this footage isn't verified. Um, and one of the reasons why we can't verify it is because the people that are filming, they're not saying the date and place, right? So if you're watching this, you need to say the date and place, you know, so we can see you know, so that we can verify. That's how you verify it, right? We need to know the date and place. That's why it's not verifiable, but there's a lot of footage like this, like so many clips that, I mean, in my view, it's undeniable. Man, these people left without taking the blacks. Man. None of the blacks, man. See, see. None. Everyone is stranded. This is, this is really too bad. But that's my personal view. Um, but at the end of the day, there's a reason why a lot of publications aren't reporting on it because it's not verifiable. So guys, if you're posting stuff like this, you need to verify the date and place. So I, you know, I've posted this on my social media. It's gotten like over a hundred, a hundred thousand views. And so a lot of, I've been seeing a lot of comments and people are saying, you know, well, the people asking whether, um, you know, because the Ukrainians have denied men, ages 18 to 60 from leaving the country. So people are wondering, well, does this include the Africans? But according to people on ground, um, and that's uh, verified by um, channels, television, foreigners are being allowed out. It's only Ukrainian men ages 18 to 60 that are meant to stay. Many people have here for four days, different countries, no matter who are, the soldiers are not even letting anybody in, except uh, Ukrainians, babies, and their mothers. That's all. So there are two sides to this, right? On one side, we can literally see Ukrainian people blocking pe uh, black people from entering trains. These people have claimed this in this video, in these videos, various videos, blocking people from entering trains and dragging them out of trains. So that's one side, right? And these trains are, I imagine, are going uh, to, uh, are exiting the country or going near the border. Then on the other side, we have the African, different African governments, um, not, or at least the consulates or the embassies, not responding quickly enough. We've not really gotten like official assistance from like the Nigerian Commission in Poland and some, and also the embassy in, in Kyiv. They have not been so on top of it as we would like. We just hope that the border still remains open. That's the only thing I can say. Because now we're hearing that it's not as if Poland is refusing Nigeria. It's that on the Ukraine end, they're not letting them enter the EU because they say that you cannot enter without like an EU, like without a visa. That's the problem in some of the border crossings. And you know how far the border is. So they went there and they trekked for maybe one hour, two hours on getting to the border. Now they could not enter. They could not pass through. So now it, they're basically like stranded and have to walk back to civilization. And now the issue is that they can't get vehicles to take them back to the city or take them to another border crossing. So it's quite tough and it's quite challenging. And some people have been able to beg good Samaritans to help. Or imagine you are in a group of 20, you cannot really get vehicles to take 20 people. So, and you won't want to leave some people behind. And so it's been very tough for them.
Uh, we've heard about some issues with the Nigerian embassy specifically um, and not responding quickly enough. But uh, that said, it seems they have responded. So I'm going to put the details in here about if you are Nigerian and you're in Ukraine, what you need to do right now. So they have responded as of late, and hopefully this situation can be resolved immediately. Hi, everyone. For Nigerians in Ukraine trying to cross over to Poland, there are eight borders between Poland and Ukraine, but four borders are recommended. These are the four borders. I kind of wanted to break down kind of the Ukrainian perspective on black people. And I think we can take a page from recent history. Cut to November 2013, Viktor Yanukovych was the president of Ukraine. He had a reputation for heavy handedness, corruption, and above all, for being openly pro-Moscow. In 2013, he rejected an EU trade deal. Instead, Yanukovych decided to take a $15 billion bailout from Russia. To many Ukrainians, it felt like being sold to Moscow. So protests broke out. They were called Euromaidan. Here, protesters chanted, sign the EU deal. Yanukovych must step down. Russia supported the president. The West supported the protesters. In February 2014, Yanukovych's government was toppled. The president was driven out of Ukraine. He fled to Russia. Not every Ukrainian was happy with this. Funny enough, Western media will describe it as, oh, they're calling it a coup. But when you have a government in place and somebody overthrows that government, that's what it's called. It's called a coup. <laughs> um, so... There, was, there were a bunch of riots because the people of Ukraine just were not aligned. They didn't want this president. And at the end of the day, in a democracy, it's about what the people want. So the people overthrew the government. The, the separatists in Donbass, they aligned with Russia. They promoted the Russian agenda, and so they joined Russia. The focus then shifted to eastern Ukraine, where Russia-backed separatists had seized territory. Ukrainian forces did not launch an all-out offensive at first, but on the 17th of July 2014, when a flight carrying 298 people was shot down by these rebels, Ukrainian forces decided to flush out the rebels. The separatists began losing ground, so the Russian army stepped in. They invaded eastern Ukraine and fought alongside the rebels. What followed was a series of talks between Russia, Ukraine and the West. They resulted in the Minsk Accords. This was first signed in 2014. Both sides agreed on ceasefire and military withdrawal. Ukraine agreed to hold elections in the rebel-held areas. Eight years on, the Minsk Accords remain unimplemented. So during that period of, in 2014, we can learn a little bit about how the Ukrainians were treating black people. And I'm going to put a quote from an interview on Channel's Channel Television. On Channel's Television. And Channel's Television is one of the mainstream news networks in Nigeria. Uh, during the Crimean and the Donbass, uh, Donbass is the Donetsk region and the Lugansk, when they were uh, initially separated, we had cases of Nigerian students being kidnapped. You know, they came to their homes and kidnapped them. And uh, it, it took a lot of uh, negotiations and uh, diplomacy uh, to get them released, but that was not without torture. So the first question is, why isn't the Western media or why isn't a lot of media covering, you know, what's happening to these black people, right? Or they're not covering it extensively. And, you know, in my view, it has to do with, um, they have an agenda, right? They have an agenda their agenda is the Western perspective, which is skewing more white, right? White idealism, right? So it's not in their best interest to report this story because it will cause divisions with black, in the, black people in the West. So it's not in their best interest to report this story. But white supremacy is crumbling before our, our eyes because at the end of the day, these issues of racism happen globally. It happens in the West, it happens everywhere, right? Especially in European and Western countries. So they're trying to deafen this conversation so it doesn't cause division here in the West amongst black people because we saw what happened in 2020 with the Black Lives Matter riots and they do not need there to be outrage in America right now or in the West. And here's the thing, this is exactly what Putin would want. And I'm gonna talk about this in a bit. Um, I'm gonna talk about this in a bit, but this is exactly what Putin wants. But at the end of the day, 
it's a system, white supremacy is a system that needs to be crumbled and it is crumbling before our eyes and it's being crum and it's crumbling by white people and they are crumbling it themselves. So what I have to say, the, re the, the my issue with a lot of the media isn't covering this, especially Western media, because I have to tell you guys, don't get your media from one uh, source, one country. You know, in, on this channel, we talk about a lot about media, the architecture of media. And we have to realize that we are in a Web3 world. We are in a globalized world. There was never a time that we would be able to get media from different countries around the world. I watch everything. I watch the news from India, from Russia, from China, from the US, from Germany, from everywhere, because everybody's perspective on this is different. And it's important to get well informed about everybody's perspective and then come draw your own conclusion, right? Don't believe everything that the media is telling you, especially not Western media. <laughs> right? Don't believe the hype. It's called propaganda. They're brainwashing you. So guys, you really just need to, you're lucky you have YouTube. Go on YouTube, get your sources from everywhere. I'll list below some of the publications that I, I get my news from. So I posted this on TikTok and here's how people are responding. So there seems to be a lot of division. A lot of the people with more of a Western white supremacist perspective are sort of trying to gaslight this, uh, what's, what's happening. The first thing, their instinct is to deny, deny what is happening. Even though there's footage that clearly shows black people being refused entry, black people being mistreated, but their instinct is to deny, and why? And honestly, I have to say, it is not their fault. In my view, it's white culture, it's white supremacy. And in my view, white supremacy was designed to be a ghost, to be invisible. This is something that was designed 500 years ago and it's had 500 years to develop and it's built on capitalism. So white supremacy was designed to be invisible. It's designed to make you point fingers by distracting you, you know, with what everybody else is doing apart from whiteness and westernness, right? Point fingers whether at the black people, the uh, Iranian people, the <laughs> Arabs, whoever, as long as you're not pointing your finger at white people and whiteness, right? That is what it's designed to do. In truth, I really can't blame white people for white supremacy. I think it's unfair to do that, right? Because white supremacy is built into the DNA of Western culture, Western education, Western systems of governance, Western laws, Westernization. It's built into that DNA and for somebody to unlearn it, right? Someone to unlearn it, they have to go against the grain. They have to go and look to a, a, a different educational system. And most people are followers. Most people are passive consumers. Most people aren't gonna think, well, they, this is what they taught me in school. Well, I'm gonna go against it and I'm gonna go and relearn history from another perspective. Most people don't think like that. So really, I challenge you, white people, black people too, I challenge you to go and learn more about white history, which is white supremacy. That is white history. This idea that it's black history, it's not. This is white history. And actually, a white person made a very good podcast about this called Seeing White. And it's about the history of white supremacy. Um, specifically in America, but he breaks down the foundations of it. And I did that in my doc too, put it on here. Who created white supremacy? It's a modern concept, only 500 years old. I don't blame white people for white supremacy, you know? Apart from these animals in those videos that were doing that, that's disgusting behavior. But I mean the basic white person that's not dragging people off of trains and not, you know, aggressively being an animal or being animalistic and attacking black people. But I mean, just the people in my comment section that are like, oh, all lives matter. And oh, you guys only think that this is all about you. Or the people in the comment section that their initial reaction to seeing th these videos is to gaslight and assume that obviously this footage that I'm seeing in front of me is fake. And it's, it's, it's somehow neglecting something else. I'm talking to those white people because the racism has different varying degrees of it. You have your outright aggressors who are gonna do everything in their power 
you know, and then you're gonna have the people that are more mild. And you're gonna have the people that are passively racist. They don't realize that their ideology, the way that they think is built on white supremacy. And honestly, it's not their fault because it's the system that they've been brought up in. It's the perspective that they've always understood. And honestly, I'm not gonna blame white people for it, I, but I do challenge you to learn your history, go against the grain and learn. Question, why is my first reaction to gaslight this footage that I can clearly see black people being blocked from entering a train, or I can clearly see black people being dragged out of a train. I can clearly see black people saying that they're not being allowed out of the border. I can clearly see police, gunmen, you know, facing black people, students. Why is your first reaction to gaslight? Question that because it's coming from the system of white supremacy that you don't even realize it's beyond your consciousness, beyond your understanding, but it's what it, you've been indoctrinated into. Question why you think like that. White supremacy is built into the DNA of, West, of the West. It's built into the fabric of the West. Right? And it's embedded in your, mind, in your mindset, in your consciousness, in a way that you don't even understand or you don't even see it because it's been developed over 500 years. So how can you start to see the white supremacy within you? I suggest listening to the podcast, Seeing White, um, by Seen on Radio. And it's a white man who's, who, who uncovers a lot about the history of white supremacy Definitely go and see that. So you can question within yourself, why is my first instinct to deny and to gaslight when I can clearly see that there are black people being mistreated? We need to learn the history. We need to understand why this is happening because white supremacy also affects white people, right? Even within whiteness, there's a hierarchy, right? The more Western blonde, you know, that you are, the more you're superior as a white person. White people are no different. They have their own colorism. They have their own version of colorism. And it has to do with hair color. It has to do with eye color, right? It has to do with your features. Is it more Western Eurocentric? So this idea that, <laughs> so we have to recognize that, look, this is all white supremacy that we're seeing unfold. Um, and, and I'm glad to see that it's finally crumbling. And I just think that we just need to ensure that it dies in this era. So like I said, there's a lot of division. I see this on my TikTok. It's got over like over 100,000, maybe over, even 200,000 views on this, on this content. And I'm seeing a lot of the comments. So on one side, it's the white uh, perspective or the Western perspective that's gaslighting. On the other side, it's the black perspective that's sort of saying, let's go Russia and sort of rooting for Russia. And I just have to ask a question to black people that are doing this. Do you really think that the Russians would treat black people any better? No, they wouldn't. <laughs> so this idea that your default mode is if I don't support Ukraine and the Western per perspective, I'm automatically going to r support the opposition. I think that's problematic. What I have to say is this is not our war. This is their war, right? This war is a tribalistic war between white the Western powers or the Western world or the white world, right? is a tribalistic war. And guess what? This is not the only war that's going on right now. It's, 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 not, it's not really different than what's happening in Cameroon right now or Sudan, right? Syria, Yemen, right? Ethnic conflicts. But the media is only focused on the West because why? because of white supremacy, because why? Because there's a conversation that white lives are more important than any other lives, but there are wars going on around the world. And the world is ignoring right now. They're over the fact that it's happened for decades, as this news, news reporter pointed out. But this isn't a place, with all due respect, um, you know, like Iraq or Afghanistan that has seen conflict raging for decades. You know, this is a relatively civilized, uh, relatively European, I have to choose those words carefully too, uh, city where you wouldn't expect that or hope that it's going to happen. But I have to say to black people, this is not our war. Tribalism, this is what this is. 
And I know people don't want to call it tribalism because when it's white people, you want to call it sophisticated. But when it's other people, well, they're tribalistic animals or whatever you say. <laughs> and this idea that whiteness is civilized and non-whiteness isn't is a lie. Because when you just look at history, it's a lie, right? The Moors taught the, the British Europeans how to bathe. The Romans taught um, the British how to build roads. They didn't know how to build roads. And then the Egyptian empire. But I have to say to black people, this is not our war. So this is not, and this is not a game either. It's not a game, it's not a game of, ch um, it's not a soccer game that you could take sides. Let me take sides. Oh, let's go Russia, what, like what? This is not a soccer game. It's not a joke, right? So what I have to say to you is sit back and just watch. Do what you can do to help if you believe that you want to help, but this is not a game, right? And we have to pay attention to the way that black people are being treated. Now I have to say, this is exactly what Russia wants. Uh, Putin wants there to be division and in the West. This is what he did in the 2016 elections. This is what he wants to happen, right? And are we playing into, are we playing into you know, his plot? I don't think that he plotted this. This is bigger than him, right? White supremacy is bigger than him, and he is also a perpetuator of white supremacy. So our division, right, our division has to do with the history of white supremacy. It's deeper than whatever the case is. And this is a war against the white world, and I say, let them fight it out, because white supremacy is crumbling before our eyes. And they're the ones that are doing it. They're the ones that built it. They're the ones that are crumbling it. So those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, all the above. My name is Kenham, and see you next time. Peace. I truly do mean that.